Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Weekly. As always, I'm Robo. I don't know what this is. And I will tell you that the SH Figure Arts Last Jedi Luke Skywalker is my new favorite figure of the year so far. It may be in competition for best of the year. And I figured The Last Jedi was a volatile enough discussion to distract you from the NECA Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle sets. Because holy f it's completely understandable people are pissed off. I mean, the regular set sold out within a minute on average over the past two, three days. And then the Dio set sold out in under two or around two minutes. Whoa. And I understand NECA's position. I mean, they can only offer so many. They can only offer this through this avenue. License restrictions and such, it's... Mm, it's a double-edged sword. They want to get the figures out there, but they can't get the figures out there to everybody. I just feel like that's a no-win situation, at least for the majority of people who aren't getting the set. But isn't Luke so pretty? But we'll go ahead and get into the toy news. Let's talk about some Marvel Legends. Uh, we'll talk about some Star Wars Black series, uh, some Marvel Legends, some Diamond Select Ghostbusters, then some Marvel Legends, SH Figure Arts Avengers, Marvel Legends, some Star Wars model kits, and some Marvel Legends. First up, here's a promotional shot. Promotional shot? Promotional shot. First up, here's a promotional shot of Diamond Select's Ghostbusters Series 10, which is starting the real Ghostbusters looks. Series 10 is Egon, it's Winston, and it's Slimer. Now, I don't remember where I was or what I was doing whenever the real Ghostbusters was on TV. I think I remember the fake Ghostbusters cartoon more than the real Ghostbusters cartoon. And even though I've avoided most of the Ghostbusters figures so far, I, I, I'm kind of in for the cartoon look. It, it looks neat. I, I like it. And I can't hardly pass on an Egon. Do you see the trend? Donatello's the best turtle. Egon's the best Ghostbuster. I may have a type. Either smart dudes on teams or guys in makeup. Hmm. But they say the Ghostbusters are in cartoon accurate gear. They gave Slimer uh, three alternate faces. A uh, new set of arms to go along with the cartoon look. And really, this isn't anything. We saw these at Toy Fair, but it's nice to see promotional shots because along with the promotional shot, it also says they go up for pre-order June 20th. But then Series 10 consists of Ray, Peter, and Stay Puffed. And with Series 6 through 10, you can build the firehouse facade. And maybe I wasn't paying attention or <laughs> I don't know, but... It comes with two different signs, and then it comes with the hook and ladder lettering, so you can either make the firehouse from Ghostbusters 1 or Ghostbusters 2. Another figure that was revealed recently, the SH Figure Arts Avengers Infinity War Falcon. We saw that at Tamashi Comic Con. And bam, it's up for solicitation now, but it is a Soul Web exclusive. I don't know the criteria they choose to either make something a Soul Web exclusive or, you know, available all around the world. Maybe it's because of Falcon's wings or the size or the price. I don't know. But it's looking pretty cool with the coloring on the costume. I, there was so much happening in Infinity War. I, I Maybe I missed if his costume changed any or the actual colors from the movie. But this looks fantastic. Now it comes with several sets of hands. It comes with some movable wings. They Impressive spread. I like the look of it on his back. Uh, they fold back and everything, but you can also take them off for a swappable backpack for when they're in, you know, retracted mode. He has his two guns, and then he has an alternate head, which is cool. Usually with the exclusives, they kind of uh, skimp out, like they did on the Luke Skywalker. Uh, he comes with makeup accessories. But this alternate head is looking fantastic. I, I, I look at it, and, I, and Luke. Luke is great. Falcon looks great, and it makes me wonder what happened here, or here. Hey, it's Captain America. We're gonna release him again anyway with the next movie. Just phone it in. We'll, we'll try again later. But Winter Soldier is kind of like Falcon, where I feel like this may be our only chance at an SH Figure Arts Winter Soldier. And I don't like it. Now, Falcon releases January 2019. Like I said, Soul Web exclusive. So you'll have to go to places like Naponya San or some third party sellers where he's running about $90. Those are some expensive wings. But we're also waiting to hear if Bluefin's going to import this one, which would be a cool thing. Bring it in. I'll get it from them. The announcement and solicitation of Falcon also fits into this picture that Instamashi posted, uh, was it sometime this week, last week, something. But it has all the releases for Avengers so far and kind of in order. And then it got up to Falcon, which now that he's announced, uh, we can, you know, trust this picture a little bit more. And next up should be Hulk. We've seen him displayed at a couple of shows, no solicitation pictures yet, no promotional images. But if this holds true, he should be next. 
I don't know why I looked down like that. I just kind of drifted off, didn't I? Let's talk about a lot of Marvel Legends, and then we'll finish up with Star Wars, because I want to. The Spider-Man Legends SPDR wave, uh, slash slash, code code, splitter wave, I don't know how to say it. It has hit in the UK. I was on Instagram and suddenly all these shots started popping up of Doc Ock and Elektra and Daredevil. This is kind of a surprise entry. I mean, we saw the X-Men Legends wave sneak into Canada a couple months ago. I haven't seen full release on it. And then these are hitting the UK, which I'm totally cool with. I spread the love all the way around the world. I'm that kind of guy. And it also helps that I'm a couple cases behind <laughs> in Marvel Legends. I don't even know where I am. I don't know what's out. Also, pictures floating around of the Marvel Legends Ultimate Riders Logan. I think a picture popped up on Reddit and then at eBay, and I, I couldn't find the auction, so this is all I've got. But I like it. I, I, for some reason, I just dig on Logan in civilian clothes. It's nice to see the sleeveless shirt sculpted on. <laughs> they could have just painted it onto a body, and it would have been like, oh, no. The motorcycle looks a little bit plain, but it's cool. It comes with saddlebags. It's off in the package. You put it on the left side. That's probably to save some width on the package. He's got hands without claws, and then he has the patch head. This is one of the reasons I bought the 112th Collective Logan, was for the patch head. And then here's another patch head. I, I, I can't help looking at a head of Wolverine with a patch on it and not thinking I need a tuxedo body of some kind. A tuxedo body and then his Madripoor look where he had the pantyhose over the eyes and the blue and red? Was it blue and red? It was kind of a stealth costume look. No mask, just those X's over his eyes. And I better stop there or I could be wish listing Wolverine figures for the next 45 minutes. So this is out there floating around. Probably gonna pop up randomly somewhere else. You didn't know I was a fortune teller, did you? Something will happen in the future. There you go. I bet I'm right. This ran across the GameStop site earlier this week for a very, 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 very short time. And that's the PS4, uh, the listing said Gamerverse Spider-Man. Now this is based on the look from the PS4 game coming out later in the year. I'm excited about that game. We haven't had a, well, I feel like we haven't had a good Spider-Man game in a while. I think it was the Spider-Man 2 movie game where the physics seemed really real. You're swinging along and you could swing. That's the last game I remember really, really liking. And I don't even mind the big white spider in the middle. It, it's kind of visually interesting. Is it classic? No. But this being a GameStop exclusive, you don't have to get it. That's the best kind of exclusive is a figure that maybe a lot of people don't care about. But maybe a lot of people do. Again, looking into the future. Some people will like this. Some people won't. Now it has some extra hands, it has some web line, but it went up on the GameStop site. It had a release date of December, but that may just be a placeholder because they pulled the page down within an hour or two. It hadn't even been announced yet, so like, somebody's in trouble back in the GameStop headquarters. You know, the one guy back there in the inter that pushes the button for the internet pages. Oops, wrong button. Other button, pull it back down. Something else we knew about, and we even saw a package shot a couple months ago, but it was really tiny and you could barely tell what was on there. And everybody speculated that the Marvel Legends Black Panther Everett Ross and Killmonger 2-pack would have parts for Build-A-Figure Stan Lee. I nearly said Stan a figure Build Lee. And now this is trickling out. I, I don't know where the pictures came from. They just started popping up on social media. Here you go. Everett's looking cool. I know a lot of people are all like, was anybody asking for an Everett Ross? I was. Especially since I have the Doctor Strange slash Sherlock figure. I need an Everett Ross slash Watson figure to go along with them. Makes sense, right? Complete and total sense. And then Killmonger. It looks like he uses the same body. They've changed some of the paint apps. I don't know how accurate it is. It looks accurate enough to me. Looks cool. But I like the unmasked head too. Even though he may not have had this hairstyle while wearing this costume. But then on the back it also reveals the full-on Stan Lee Build-A-Figure and... Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Look, I'm gonna need that. I don't know if it was planned. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was in the back of somebody's head. But it's cool that they now utilize the photo real tech because it looks nice. His legs come with this set. And even though it was speculated he originally was going to be split into three different two packs, it looks like the other half comes in the two pack of Winter Soldier and Falcon. And then today I wake up and here is the packaging art 
for the Marvel Legends Netflix Luke Cage and Claire Temple. Again, another two-pack. Didn't know it was coming. It's probably going to be, well, <laughs> knowing the internet, we'll have pictures of it and full info and price and everything else before San Diego even hits. And then we'll get to San Diego and they'll be like, hey, we're revealing this Luke Cage and Claire. And we're like, uh, yeah, you got anything new? No? Okay. And yeah, the faces aren't exact but it's also how these are lit i think now when this picture first popped up on instagram it's kind of a back shot and the words are, are all in english like placeholders and the picture was kind of fuzzy so some people were thinking custom picture somebody you know photoshopped it up but this morning it was verified on jerry wilson's instagram he, he does the package art for marvel legends and this is in fact coming i think claire's kind of skinny I, I, I like the sculpted parts, but she looks a little bit thin, but man, Luke Cage looks awesome. I like the shirted look with the wrinkles, the sleeves right here, and the elbows. Is that a new style of elbow? It looks like a single hinge, but it looks like it's going to get more range than a double. It, the, the cutout is going way down here. Word on the street is that this is a Walmart exclusive, while the Stan Lee packs are Target exclusives. Keeping with exclusives, here's what seems to be the Walgreens exclusive Star Wars Black Series General Veers. When they revealed Tarkin, I was like, they are never going to make any more of the officers. So we'll never see Piet, we'll never see Veers, and now we've seen Piet, and now we've seen Veers. I'll never see a million dollars just drop into my bedroom. No. Looking great. I know they switched some things up. They don't use the whole exact sculpt, so hopefully he has a little different parts, but the apparent different parts are the helmet and then the chest armor and the armored belt, whatever that is. And that's, of course, for his Adat Commander look. You can see the hat is separate, so the armor is definitely removable. So right off the bat, I'm going to need two of these. I'm going to need one for Adat Commander to be standing with my Adat driver, and then I'd need just the uniform look to be hanging out with Piet and Tarkin, even though I know, I know, I know, I know, but I'm going to put all my Imperial officers together on the shelf, or at least close. But I'm also going to need another Veers, uh, some white paint, and another Grand Admiral Thrawn to make a Season 4 Rebels Thrawn when he was wearing the ad, -AD gear. Oh, bottomless pit of toys this year, just no end in sight. And then finally for Star Wars, there is a hobby show going on overseas and they revealed some new Bandai Star Wars model kits. God dang, I love those things. Now the first one that caught my eye was this R2-D2 and it's, he seems to have booster rockets and the placard says booster rocket version. But then there's a different one that's being shown with a bunch of tools that didn't come with the first two versions of R2-D2, but I think he's been released a couple times. So once with BB-8, once with R5-D4. So I don't know if this is a deluxe version separate from the rocket booster version or the rocket booster version comes with all these parts. But I'm guessing it all comes together because the price is apparently $21 according to the placard and it has a release date of November. So this one's already on the cards. Seems to be a single release. Surely he'll come with all that stuff, which is basically just a bunch of attachments to the figure we already have. But they're also showing other Astromechs. You have your R5J2, which is just a recolor of R5D4, which I'm completely good with. I know you can paint the models still in the sprues, cut them out, you know, sand some sides, put them together, and then you have a different Astromech, but me being a lazy ass, I'd, I'd much prefer they just release these and I can go, oh, I get my black R5 unit. But I don't think his body's supposed to be turned around backwards. I, I think that's the only thing wrong here. Maybe they put it together in the display wrong or something, but mm -mm. keeping up with the Death Star Astromex, there's also an R2 Q5 on display. The placards on these don't have a release date, they don't have a price, so they're just kind of, hey, here these are. But as far as I can remember, the model kit line isn't like the figure arts line where they're just going to show stuff and then it never releases. It seems like they've been pretty consistent about showing something and it eventually releasing. But the one that has my heart all a flutter is R4i9. We don't have an R4 unit in 6 inch scale anywhere, so to get this in the model kit line, yeah, I need an R4 unit. I don't even know where this appeared in the movies or anything, but I'm like, holy shit, I need that. And the awesome thing about this it's placard already has a release date and a price. It looks like it's going to be $20 and it releases in November. I just got my Luke Trooper this week and this is the last solicited figure in the model kit line. This being June, hopefully they have some surprises between now and September. I, it doesn't seem like they're going to announce anything. It may just be a long wait till the next one for essentially 
recasts of figures we already have with new heads or new parts, but I can't help being happy seeing the model kit line continue, even if it is just Astromex. Hopefully they're using this to build up money, resources, time for more elaborate kits. We need our IG-88, we need our Forlom, even though I dig the Black Series figure. Give us more droids, give us more stuff, give us more figures. And that's it for this week. I, a lot of Marvel, a lot of Star Wars, a little bit of other stuff in between. Now I hate to do this, but I'm prepping to head out to Denver Comic Con next week. I'll be at the show every day, all day, and so uh, not a lot of time for videos next week. And then directly after that I head to Smallville Comic Con in Kansas. A lot of traveling, a lot of driving, a lot of setup, a lot of selling just, you know, at the show. I'm gonna try to do some reviews and have those ready just to put up randomly over the next two weeks, but I hate to say it because really this has become the highlight of my week is Fridays. I wake up and oh, Ooh, it's weekly day! I get to talk about toys and all the new stuff and I love it and I want to do it and it just puts me in such a good mood going into the weekend. But at the same time, two weeks vacation, vacation, I'm going to work, but a vacation uh, right before San Diego, that'll probably help out the old row brain to get back on track on toys. And I'm also going to announce the winners for the giveaway for the last uh, figure of fodder. Uh, that'll be next week. But homework assignment, <laughs> your mission if you choose to accept it, is to go into the past on this channel and watch some of the older weeklies and then comment down below what you like, what you don't like, what needs to be improved upon and I'll come back after two weeks, sit and ponder, or I'll be away for two weeks, you know, thinking about how I can improve this channel, how can I improve this show, and uh, we'll get together then. But if you're at Denver Comic Con or Smallville, you see me, come by say hi. We'll stand around shoot the shit for a minute. Denver Comic Con's pretty busy, but I, I, mm, we'll try. So if you like this Foosh Weekly, comment, like, subscribe. I'll catch you on the Foosh.